It should be obvious by the kinds of content that I make that finding new ways to make live streaming or content creation easier is a pretty big focus of mine. Sneaky tricks to rig things up, workarounds, entire tutorial courses on live streaming software, I try to cover everything I can. So when Nerd or Die reached out to sponsor a video about me taking a look at their new advanced overlay maker for Streamlabs OBS, there was, and once I saw what it was, there was no way I was gonna say no. Let's take a look. So if you want to find Nerd or Die's new tool, it's available in the Streamlabs OBS uh, app store in their dashboard. I will have a direct link to it in the description below, but it'll be easier to set it up directly from within Streamlabs OBS. It is, of course, as with most apps in Streamlabs' app store, it's about $5 a month. You can do $3 a month if you pay annually, and it does have a 15-day trial. So if you want to make sure that it's what you want, you can check it out before actually paying, although you do need to cancel in PayPal and all of that. So keep that in mind, but you check it out. It will add a little tab basically to your dashboard here once you have it set up and installed, which makes it really handy to keep coming back to. And then once you get to it, there are a lot of different assets available at the moment that you can mess with all without having to buy the separate entire themes and things like that and choose between them. Their little setup processes for their Streamlabs optimized themes where you can just click a single shortcut to automatically set it all up are really handy, but if you want to customize individual assets, this is honestly the way to go. So for example, they have the more common asset types. So you have a webcam frame, they have a bunch of different options. I'm quite the fan, of course, of the RetroWave one and the Clearview one, which I have already customized. So if I click on it here, select, you can choose which aspect ratio the frame is set up for. So you have 16 by nine or four by three. It would be cool if you could kind of customize it a little bit more than that, but that's all right. Then you can choose the darkness of the second kind of pseudo transparent layer there from zero, so it's completely gone to 100 where it's kind of black. You can kind of customize how faded that is. And then of course you can change the different colors for the gradient here. So my my favorite of course is give me a nice little teal to a little bit brighter of a pink going here. A little bit of magenta. Got a nice little pseudo animated frame here. Click save. You can give it a name. I have already named mine teal pink webcam frame, but I'm just going to overwrite that one and proceed. And once you have saved it, then you can insert it into your scene of choice and click insert. And then that will allow you to go to your editor and check out the frame itself. So it shows up here in Streamlabs OBS as kind of basically a web source here. And you can move it around, lock it, resize it, crop it, do all the normal stuff you would do with a source within OBS. And then of course you add and align your webcam layer to fit underneath it and go ahead and lock both of those so that they won't be edited and then you can just hide them real quick if desired you have a really nice looking frame that you can then say you get tired of this color scheme you can see it right here i do realize that's not perfectly cropped but it's fine for now if you get tired of this color scheme or just decide you want to change it up you can go back here into the overlay maker you would, if you've already done something else, you'll have to come here to back to webcam, go to clear view, select, and then you can change it up. So let's say I want an orange and what a, a deep dark blue gradient going here. And I want to make that dark layer like really dark Then I can save that. And you can either save it as a new one or replace the one that you have. So I'll just replace it, even though it's called teal and pink, you know, whatever. Then we're good to go. And then when I go back to my scene here, it is now that orange and blue color scheme instead of teal and pink. So you can customize them on the fly, which is pretty handy. But you don't have to do it that way. That was kind of the roundabout way. If you actually double click on the source and then go to open app settings, you can actually directly change the layer that you have set up already, which is a little bit handy, but I wanted to show you the different options available. If we go back here, there are, of course, different options in the sidebar. We, we looked at the webcam overlays. There's suborder bars. And so I've shown these off a couple times, which they interact with Streamlabs as stream labels. So you got like your top tipper, your newest tip, your newest subscriber, your newest follow. So let's say I really like the interface one. I actually do 
I like that one pretty much. And they do have indicators here with which ones are like the most customizable. Those have the lightning bolts. Go ahead and click that. Then you can choose whether they're stacked or horizontally laid out. I'm going to choose stack. You can choose the alignment here, border size, make a super thick border, adjust the width of the actual frame itself, adjust the layer spacing, adjust the separator. You can adjust the text colors, the font colors, different texts. You can choose which text is which, and then you can keep adding different stacks. So that's a stack, stack, stack. Looks like with this specific one, you can go up to five. I'm going to click save, test, stack, save. And then we're going to add this to our 4x3 webcam scene we were just looking at. Go to view scene. Now we have this giant supporter stack of top tippers. That way we can just, you know, align up here with our webcam, should we desire. And then I can hide my previous stack if I wanted. You get the idea there. Going through the different options, you have social panels. If you just want your actual, you know, Twitter handle or Instagram handle or whatever showing within a specific theme and then you can customize the colors from there. They have a handy little scroller thing which I actually added to my scene. You can see down here where it shows Instagram, Twitter, and you can add different social networks and customize those. You've got a background loop. These are really cool. So they're animated backgrounds from the different themes which were already pretty fun. But then you can actually change the color organization of them. So I changed clear view before. We can go over here to Apex. This is a nice like esports theme looking one, but you don't got to stick with just that. You can go over here and say, okay, I want the background to be purple. I want the color highlight to be that. Boom. You got yourself a background. Save it. Apex, teal, purple, BG. Save. And you can insert it to any scene. So let's say I want it in my be right back scene. Insert it. Go over here to my be right back. And then just drag it down over top of my previous background. And we're good to go. So there's a lot of stuff like that. You can customize stinger transitions. Those are really cool. Customize countdown timers with different colors and things like that. That's really nice as well. You can choose individual text customization to add your own text, generic text your stream schedule to pop up and, you know, show on screen during your be right back screen or your starting soon screen or something like that. You can set up entire grouped overlays. So like an entire supporter bar that runs atop, across the top or bottom of your screen. And then they have the labs section, which is stuff that they're experimenting with right now. This is just a singular source, which is no particles, but you can customize them. So you can customize what color the particles actually are. I can make them like bright blue snow. You can change how much snow falls, change how long they are, and then you can change like how fast it goes, how much distance it covers, and then you can even add a background to it if you so desire for some reason. But this adds as a transparent overlay across your stuff, which is pretty neat. Now, again, this is the only labs source that they have at the moment, but the really cool thing about all of this is it may not have all of their different, you know, overlays or templates or features just yet. But there's so much potential here, especially with the organization and the deep customizability of every source. There's a lot of potential here for it to be really freaking cool in the future once they have more stuff added. I mean, it's already pretty cool now. A lot of this is a game changer IMO for being able to customize this. And I really wish it was in normal OBS studio, but the potential of the different labs experiments and things like that is I'm pretty stoked to see what they do with it in the future. IMO for being able to customize this and I really wish it was in normal OBS studio, but the potential of the different labs experiments and things like that is I'm pretty stoked to see what they do with it in the future. So there you have it. If you want access to a wide gamut of Streamlabs OBS themes and overlays and assets and the ability to customize every little aspect of every single one, Nerd or Die has you covered. I just really hope that this trickles down to normal OBS studio one day. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Subscribe for more tech education and videos like this. I'll have some more Streamlabs OBS videos coming very soon. And if you want to check out Nerd or Die's other assets and overlays and things like that, I have a couple tutorials on that. Check those out if you're interested. And I have an affiliate link for their website, which I would recommend using if you check out their stuff as well. Otherwise, hit the like button, subscribe, as I said before already. I'm Evil's Vox, and I will see you next time.